Bruce Kanye here. I'm part of a team that employs floating islands to fix phosphorus-impaired water. Our islands are made of filter material that plants grow through and native microbes readily colonize. Over the last 10 years, we've learned three vital things. The more water circulating through our floating islands, the better they perform at cycling nutrients into biofilm instead of algae. Islands work about four and a half times faster when fed aerobic water. We've learned that we don't need to dedicate the deep portion of a waterway to anaerobic conditions. That's because aerobic, anoxic, and anaerobic microbes all occur within a floating island. We can get through the complete nutrient cycle in a floating island. That means that we can dedicate the waterway to growing air-breathing fish. The key element is the floating stream bed. It maximizes circulation, aeration, and surface area. It took many expensive prototypes to develop. Plants on top, diatom-based periphyton underneath, growing on and within the island, and also on the unique native freshwater sponge that proliferates on the island's base here at Shepherd. Uh, you know, nature's on our side. It's a short step in the food web from diatoms, a form of plant, into fish. On Fish Fry Lake here, we're sustainably cycling one and a half times as much phosphorus out of water as is coming in. We've done this for three years now, and we do this by engendering, growing, and harvesting fish. It's time to scale up. We'd welcome a partner with funding. Floating islands can fix large bodies of water. We plan to harvest solar power on top of our islands so that they pay for themselves while cycling phosphorus into fish. The native microbes that colonize our islands do 80% of the nutrient cycling, so solar islands can work with or without plants. We are a natural solution. Fisher people love it. So do folks that have to work with water. Here's a way to work with water without chemicals. I love it because frankly, I live here.